Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. On behalf of the Chairman, Senator Cotton. Thank you, uh, and thank you all for your appearance. Mr. Kress, in your written remarks, you stated that you support uh, the Biden administration's efforts to repeal the authorization for use of military force. Um, I think it was the current authorizations for military force, not just the 2002 AUMF. So that includes the 2001 AUMF? Uh, Senator, I believe my written remarks were about the 2002, but I do support President Biden's commitment to um, replacing the existing 2001 and 2002 AUMS with a more narrow and specific framework, but we need to have make sure that there is uh, sufficient authority to continue to protect the nation. Under what legal authority is the United States currently detaining uh, 40 terrorists at Guantanamo Bay? Under the 2001 AUMF. Um, if we repeal the 2001 and 2002 use of force resolutions, under what authority would we continue to detain those persons? Senator, I think that that is a very important uh, legal question that would need to be considered carefully um, as uh, the administration uh, talks to Congress about an appropriate replacement authority. Can you commit to us today that any replacement uh, resolution would give authority to continue detaining those very dangerous terrorists at Guantanamo Bay? Senator, I commit to uh, working with <coughs> Congress um, to make sure that a appropriate authorities remain with respect to those detainees. Can you commit to compliance with the requirements of Section 1034 of the 2016 NDAA that this committee must be notified 30 days before transferring any detainee from Guantanamo Bay to the continental United States? Yes, Senator, I commit to, to complying with the law. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kras, the military has long been perceived uh, as one of the most diverse institutions in our society, one of the places in our society where you are most likely to get ahead based strictly on your performance and your merits, not on where you come from or what you look like or who you are. Do you believe that the color of someone's skin or what ethnicity they might identify as should play any role in what job they perform or what rank they wear on their shoulders? Um, Senator, I believe that you know, diversity does make our, our forces the best in the world, and, and, and I, I don't think that, I do think that all decisions should be made on merit. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kras, I have some concerns um, about what I saw in the late Obama era as the only Republican who sits on both the Armed Services and the Intelligence Committee while you were the general counsel of the CIA. Uh, many of those concerns can't be discussed in this open forum. I'll simply say uh, there was a tendency towards highly bureaucratic and highly technical distinctions between intelligence activities under Title 50 and military activities under Title 10. I found those distinctions often to be tiresome and uh, disruptive of efforts to do what our government should be doing for our people, which is to identify bad guys around the world and capture them or kill them. Can you talk to me a little bit about your understanding of the distinction between Title 10 and Title 50 and give some assurance that as the General Counsel of the Department of Defense, uh, you will not help recreate these very tedious bureaucratic distinctions between so-called Title 10 activities and Title 50 activities? Yes, Senator. Uh, you know, the Title 50 framework um, authorizes uh, covert action, um, and one of the um, exceptions from what is a covert action and that therefore conducted under Title 50 is uh, traditional military activity. Um, and I know that there were two uh, clarifications, I think, in the 2019 and 2020 NDAAs um, that particular activities of the Department of Defense are traditional military activities. Um, and were I to be confirmed, you know, we certainly work to um, further that understanding amongst the interagency. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Again, we can't talk about this at great length. I think I know, I think you know what I'm talking about, though. Um, highly complex, tedious distinctions uh, that only added cumbersome bureaucratic uh, roadblocks to protecting the country from some pretty bad guys around the world. Um, I, I might want to speak to you in a classified setting before the committee votes, before the Senate votes on the floor, 
because I do think uh, it was unnecessary in the late Obama era. I think many of these distinctions were done primarily so the Department of Defense could conduct certain operations, and therefore uh, President Obama and then Vice President Biden could speak about them publicly for political benefit. And I hope that those kinds of distinctions will not be uh, recreated, especially at a time when our troop presence in Afghanistan will be zero and Iraq is very small, and therefore we might need to depend even more on our intelligence agencies to help protect the country from some very bad guys around the world. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kress. Uh, thank you all.